Hello, I'm Lemmy from Mimi Lotter. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna paint some Erebor warriors that I converted. But stuff happened. So let me just explain it in a little segment here because I think some clarification is in order. So first off, I'm gonna start with the biggest dwarf army on YouTube. And what I am painting up now and I already have, will be about 1,800 points, give or take a couple of 10, 20 points. Uh, and the forts will be a green alliance of Iron Hill warriors, and of course Dane Ironfoot, who will probably be the leader, and the uh, army of Thror, because that's the biggest alliance you can make in the game without sacrificing uh, bonuses for your armies. And I think making Dane Ironfoot the leader is the most tactically sound thing I can do. Prove me wrong in the comments if I'm completely wrong. It's possible, I have never played the game with the new rules. And sadly, there is no Casa Doom Alliance because then I would lose army bonuses, that kind of thing. So Casa Doom will be its own force and I am... Um, Painting some test models for that right now. But we'll make it a part of the biggest dwarf army in the world. If not in practicality, it will be in spirit. Oh yeah, Games Workshop Daddy sent some free Erebor warriors. Because for the conversion I make, uh, the, I use Erebor warriors Grim Hammers. But when I ordered my Erebor Warriors, the box I got was... Well, I'm gonna show you a picture I took. One of the axes was a little bit bent, there was no packaging material, so... I sent an email uh, to Games Workshop, not expecting anything from it, just saying maybe use some more packaging material. One of the axes I got is bent and it looks like it's gonna be a pain in the ass pretty much to fix it. Games Workshop responded. Give us your address again, your name, and we'll send a replacement. I was like, doesn't, you don't have to do that, but they did, and they sent, I think, a whole new box. So I need another box of Grim Hammers to convert them as well with the Erebor Warriors, I'm getting extra. So yeah, that's, that's why this whole video will be a multi-part series, because I already converted my Erebor Warriors thinking, ah, I'm not gonna show it, I just wanna enjoy the experience and I'm already painting them up and I'm gonna show you in this video how I paint them up but then the next video will be the conversion and the video after that will be how I paint uh, Erebor Militia because the Erebor Warriors will be the main part so the converted Erebor Warriors will be the main part of the army the uh, Grim Hammers I already painted in one of my first videos will be part of the army but once I didn't convert or were left over the warriors from the Erebor Warriors box, if you're still with me, I'm gonna make them part of a militia like uh, when Smaug went into Erebor and hunted down the last three pockets of resistance in the Lonely Mountain, it will be inspired on that. Like in the movies, you'll see Thorin and his friends go down into a base in a room in Erebor and he said oh no they were fighting till the last man and child it will be inspired on that so there'll be some more colorful dwarves like normal citizens taking up some bits and pieces of armor and I think that will look really good but they will be part as well of the biggest dwarf army in the world and technically have the same stats as a normal Erebor warrior but that's the backstory I'm gonna give them to make them look more awesome it will be a slow growing army what I'm building, but I do plan on making it one of the biggest Middle Earth strategy battle game armies, dwarf armies, to be correct, on YouTube. But it's gonna be slow and steady. And well, if Games Workshop keeps sending me like free stuff, it will be fucking fast, but I don't think they will do it because I was kind of a Karen, maybe in their eyes I didn't mean to be a Karen. So yeah, uh, and the Dwarf Army will be one of the main things I will focus on on the channel together with the second White Hand Army. And also in my personal collection I have sold actually quite some things. 
because I want to focus on some specific armies like Gondor, Rohan, uh, Goblin Town, but Goblin Town is pretty much done because there's not a lot you can add, but it seemed like a fuckload of fun to play. I'm still bothering my brother to paint his fucking house so he can have a battle report. I could actually just give him one of my armies, but he really likes elves and I don't have any elves anymore. Only have Haldir. I'm getting distracted. So yeah, I'm gonna show you how I paint my Erebor Warriors, converted Erebor Warriors, right now. And welcome back to the desk. As you can see, I primed the mini I'm gonna paint today with Chaos Black and used texture paint on the base. To start off, I paint the base Rhinox height, and I'm not too worried about leaving some deeper spots of black. Then I start dry brushing Wormfang Brown on top of it. It's a very heavy dry brush and some XV88 and that's a very light dry brush. You'll see that I don't apply a lot of pressure on the brush, so we have a lot of detail. Now we're gonna use a rather big brush, paint some lead belcher and I want them to be a little bit more dull because they're gonna stand next to my iron hill on the battlefield of the biggest dwarf army on YouTube. So yeah, I want them to look a little bit more different. And it's gonna be very much the same kind of color scheme as my Grim Hammers. But I'm opting not to go for Arab or Blue, but more inspired by the Games Workshop paint job. That's why I'm using Dried Bark for the most bottom layer of cloth. And I use it around his legs and his arms. And I also want this paint job to be very easy. I need to repeat it like, I don't know, 50 plus times just for this part of the army. And I'm probably gonna convert some more in the future. Now Ashen Grey for the flaps on the front of his armor, his groin, his legs. Once again, I'm inspired by Games Workshop. It looked like an easy paint scheme to do, yet elegant in a way. It, I like it. Now Doombull Brown for the gloves on his hands. And even if they don't have gloves, I'll paint them gloves. <laughs> because at this scale, it's not like you're gonna see fingernails. And personally, I'm really happy with how the conversions turned out. I have put them next to their Grimhammer counterparts and they look original enough of, or different enough that it really feels like an army and not like the same troops over and over again. Now I use Corvus Black for the handles of axes and spears, but the picks that I cut down to be a one-handed hammer axe thing I leave the handle of that silver, or should I say lead belcher, because it, I'm a lazy fuck, it's easier to paint, and it's also what Games Workshop had done. XV88 once again, this time I use it for his beard, I try to give the variation, some I give grey beards, some dark brown, some even black, some light brown, blonde even, but for this one I thought XV88 is the color, and I really like it as a beard color as well. Now Null Oil, and I use a lot of this. And with a lot I mean a fuckload. Just use it on his armor and his ashen grey flaps. All the other stuff is brown, so I use Agrax Earthshade for that. But with the Null Oil, especially on the shield, to give it some depth and look, make it look a little bit more grimy like it's being used in war. And to make sure those scales and the different parts of his armor really stand out, I use a fuckload of Null Oil. So much I was afraid an American would show up at my doorstep even. Now as I said, I Agrax Earthshade for the beard and... Pretty much everything you didn't drown in Null Oil, you're gonna use Agrax. With the beard I try to use not that much, because XV88 is a very light brown color and too much Agrax will ruin it. 
after the egg ranks is dried, I use XV88 once again in this video. I could have done this way more in order, so I don't have to open the same paint pot three times in a row. And this time I use it to highlight his beard. Try to give a little highlight on the beard of every dwarf to make sure the head stands out, because faces and bases will make a miniature look amazing. Grey seer for the whitish stripe on the ashen grey cloth. And I'm not trying to do anything fancy, just follow the bottom. Yeah, if it doesn't look perfect, it's not the end of the world. You're, I'm gonna have a fuckload of them all together. If they're looking at one specific line that isn't perfect, I probably have bigger troubles. Because this army is supposed to look intimidating as can be. And just like that, I finished one of the many, many Erebor warriors that I'm going to paint up. In the background, you can see I have primed about 12... Uh, yeah, 12 or so, ready and primed to go. I've already painted up some. And like this. This is how uh, the army looks at the moment. I've painted this captain, that's just from the normal Erebor Warriors box. I thought I'll use this specific model every time for a captain model. Give him the same a very light grey beard so he stands out in between the troops so I know where my captains are if he goes to battle. It makes it way easier for me because I don't want to spend all that money on the command packs and clean up fail cost for 5 hours just to have 4 captains. And this way they all look the same, they stand out. And I actually kind of love the vibe they're giving. And as you can see, the warband that I'm showing right now looks amazing. A captain with 12 warriors. And in the next video I'll show you how I actually converted them. I just ordered, as I'm editing and voice recording this, I just ordered a new box of Grimhammers to go with the full box that I got from Games Workshop as a replacement. Which is amazing from Games Workshop. I really like how... Their customer support said, yeah, something's wrong, no problem, here's a completely new box because one out of 24 of your miniatures has a little bent axe. They should not have done that. I wasn't asking for it, but they did it. They're fucking legends. I'll never say anything bad ever again about Games Workshop. Please, send me free stuff. <laughs> nah. This is the beginning of a long and beautiful journey of me collecting and painting up as many dwarves as I can. I have to admit as well, for the army list that I set at the beginning, I'm using old dwarf king sculpts as stand-ins for Tror and Train. I eventually will buy them and paint them, maybe even show it on the channel. I also have painted Dane Ironfoot, foot and mounted. And since I paint him up pretty much the same as a captain from the Iron Hills, I'm just gonna show you how I paint a captain from the Iron Hills. It's a little bit different than a normal warrior. So once I have collected the funds, let's say, I'll show you how I paint them up. How I paint the captain up. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is supposed to be a way longer video, actually. But yeah, since I'm still waiting for the Grim Hammers to arrive at this point, it's gonna be a multi-part series. I also painted the first of the Arabor Militia, and he came out amazing. I think this will be one of my more favorite parts of the army. And maybe I'll show a little teaser right here. So yeah, maybe you'll see that in the next video. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, show it to your mom, share it with your neighbor. And if you didn't like the video, share it with the neighbor you don't like, I don't know. But thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! The... I was gonna say fucking hobbits, what the fuck am I? Are you staring at me like that? That's...
kind of the big update, the big news. Uh, and I think I will show you how I paint my converted Arabor Warriors now. Got this fucking peeing. <laughs> I hope that doesn't go through all the fucking you. <laughs> I'm not recording this again. Just a second. You don't. 